it's certainly a long-term growth story, I think. You've got to look at investing in it over the next three, four, five years. But I think when you look at it, it's got differentiated technology. They've got a strong pipeline of orders, which we really like. And I think this morning, look, a little bit of mixed news. You saw increased profitability in both the retail business, which is interesting, but actually improved profitability in the solutions business as well, which I think was uh, more important. Um, the CFC build out is still a little bit slow, um, but we would expect that to pick up next year. Is there a difficulty pricing this stock? A, a stock which has gone from 28 quid down to £3.40 and is currently trading at £6.53. One would argue with that kind of oscillation that there is a slight conundrum pricing it. Yeah, look, this is the stock in my coverage that is the most rate sensitive. So when you see interest rates go up, um, this stock is hit effectively. And that's because of the long dated cash flows within the business. That being said, look, we still like the underlying technology. There is obvious interest in the technology. And what we really like is that those warehouses actually start to generate significant cash in the future. They start to generate out 70, 80% EBITDA margins, which is pretty mm. impressive. Mm. What about Accardo Retail? I can see a small loss in the half in terms of uh, the overall revenue plus five percent so not keeping pace with the technology solutions by any means which is what plus 59 percent but the company is highlighting that it's had some wins here strong customer acquisition growth items per basket has been stable since last october that's quite key because we saw basket size just dropping gradually over the course of the last number of quarters but that's now managed to, to find some sort of base level yeah, look, Ocado Retail was the kind of winner in COVID, right? You saw affluent people at home buying loads in their baskets, and that's just come off, and that's fine. But I think when you look at that customer growth and the order growth, it actually looks pretty impressive. I think for us, what's important to consider, though, is retail is really a bit of the tail wagging the dog at points. Um, it drives the share price, but actually, in our valuation, it's less than 10% of the business. It's not, the impo- it's not why investors are looking at this stock. When we think about regions, I mean, this is a business that is well and truly stretched beyond the UK. Uh, deals in so many different marketplaces, what from, I think it was from France to Canada to the States. But the one that caught my attention was across the Asian markets. And this is a recent one in Japan. Um, what jumped out is that this is such a huge growth market in the grocery business. What can Ocado do here that actually unlocks value for investors? Yeah, I think this is a real testament to the strength of their technology. I don't think there is anything else in the world that can compete with Ocado's grocery automation today. It is faster, more efficient and cheaper to implement than anything else. In Japan, Japan is actually quite far behind in terms of e-commerce and grocery, and so they're going to help Aeon basically catch up and and implement that. I think what was more interesting was last year they signed a deal with South Korea, uh, with the Lotte Group, and that is a real testament. Lotte are an advanced retailer, they've used lots of different automation solutions, and actually it's a big vote of confidence in the technology that Lotte say, look, we're going to partner with Ocado in one of the most advanced grocery markets in the world.